kind of like one of my high school teachers who never ever said, be quiet, calm down, or anything like that. He would just glare at us with this, with this glare that you knew that if you didn't be quiet really quick, you were in trouble. Uh, but uh, you guys were okay. Good morning. Good morning and welcome as we gather together on another beautiful day that the Lord has given to us. Um, once again, the, the, that, that frost you know, makes for just this absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous weather. However, the fog that comes with it is probably not quite as nice. Um, so uh, still be careful as you're driving because there tends to be slick spots and all that. But uh, it's Minnesota. It's winter. We love it. Amen. A few announcements to bring to your attention this morning. Uh, once again, a very busy day this morning um, because uh, one of the first things that will take place will be the two-year-old uh, milestone, and we will recognize those two-year-olds today during worship. And immediately following worship, there will be coffee with the council, and all are welcome to join us downstairs. Um, in the fellowship hall for coffee, cookies, conversation, and updates on what's going on at Grace. And then this evening from 6.30 to 8 p.m., um, a really fun event. Um, the uh, youth are going to have a mini golf tournament here in the church. And that is, I, I've done that a few times in churches, and it's just so much fun. It's so much fun for the one putting it together because you can come up with these really, really crazy golf holes, especially in the church. And uh, it will be a fun event. So, uh, so if you haven't signed up, I think if you just come, you'll, you'll be fine. That's for our uh, middle school and senior high. And that's a uh, mini golf tournament that will be going from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Um, this Wednesday, the 25th, uh, the GLOW Youth Praise Team will meet from 5.30 to 6.45. Contact Erica for more information about that. And then next Sunday, we will recognize the second graders milestone. So please join us for that as well. One of, the, uh, one of the, the true joys, and I say this every time, and I've had many opportunities um, over this past, especially six months, is to be a part of, uh, of a baptism. Um, it's one of those events that, that we just enjoy. And this, uh, this morning, um, Logan Linal will... Uh, will be baptized, and, and we are just going to be excited about that. She's already been smiling away at me, and so I think everything's going to be perfect, and I'll try not to wake her up too much with the water. So that's another, uh, another great event that we celebrate this day as well. And then one announcement, um, not in our bulletin, kind of a last second thing, um, our sympathies to the Kyle Oldry and family um, as Kyle's aunt Judy Cass passed away. There's no uh, um, information with respect yet to, uh, to planning in that, but, uh, but please keep them in your thoughts and in your prayers. Those are all the announcements to bring to your attention. Today, at this point in time, I would invite Erica forward. There we go. I will invite all the two-year-olds and their families up front and you can see um, their your child's name is going to be on one of the pillows so you can find your name Hello, everybody. Glad to have you here. Uh, this is a special day for you guys because you're getting a very special pillow. And this is a prayer pillow. So you can use this pillow every time you want to say a prayer. And a prayer is when we get to talk to God uh, and he listens to us, which is really cool. But we can pray to say we're thank you about all the good things in our life. Uh, we can pray when we're scared or mad, happy or sad. We can pray for God to help us and help others. And parents, you can help your child uh, use their prayer pillow by using your favorite prayers at home 
or um, in the envelopes, there's prayer cards that you can use. There's morning, mealtime, and bedtime prayers, um, just short little ones to start. So if you feel like using those, you can use those too. Um, so how can this pillow help us pray? Well, when we lay down to sleep at night, we lay our head on a pillow and we sink in and relax. We kind of let go of all the worries of the day. Uh, this pillow is to help you relax and know that God is in charge and will care for you day and night, no matter where you are, no matter what is happening. So now we're going to use our prayer pillows for the first time. So if you want to grab your pillow, you can hug it or just hold it, whatever you want to do. And we're going to pray. So I'll say the words and you say it after me. And everybody is invited to join in the prayer as well. So are we ready? Okay, here we go. Oh, good and loving God, you made me and give me everything I need. Thank you for your forgiveness and the gift of my friend Jesus. Help me always relax in your love and care Help me live each day and night for you. Help me live each day and night for you. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, everybody. You can take your pillows with you. And I was uh, thinking this morning, should I or shouldn't I? Um, I will. I heard one of the most incredible definitions of a two-year-old. This was many, many years ago, and I was listening to a radio station, WCCO Radio, the good neighbor to the great Northwest up in the Twin Cities, and there was a, a, a very prominent pediatrician who was being interviewed by, uh, by one of the, the hosts of the show. And during the course of the interview, one of the things that the host did, he said, I'm going to give you an age of a child and I want you to give me a one-line definition of that child. And so, you know, he'd go five-year-old and the pediatrician would give this one-line definition and four-year-old. He gets to a two-year-old. And without hesitation, the, two, the, the pediatrician goes, a two-year-old is a psychotic dwarf, <laughs> but with a really good prognosis. <laughs> and I think of my own two daughters and think when they were two years old. And, uh, you know, that's a pretty good definition. But, uh, oh, yeah, look at that. He's even laughing about it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, congratulations to the two-year-olds this morning. We continue our worship with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. Please rise if you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another as we take a moment for silent reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved our neighbors whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. 
Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And being we're standing, let's just turn and let's greet one another in Christ's name today. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join with me in our prayer of the day. Lord God, your loving kindness always goes before us and follows after us. Summon us into your light and direct our steps in the ways of goodness that come through the cross of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We continue our worship with the reading of the lessons. Good morning. Good morning. 
Our first reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 4. There will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, the Lord brought into contempt the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken, as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for today is Psalm 27, verses 1 and then 4 through 9, and we're going to read it responsibly. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. Uh, I do have to note, and thank you for advancing the slide, uh, we do have count coffee with the council this morning after church. Uh, I would encourage you all to uh, join that and, and ask any questions. And I think it's kind of interesting, as the Bible usually does, when you're thinking about a topic, you read a Bible verse, or you hear something that says, huh, that's kind of exactly what I was hoping uh, this next event would lead to. And I think this first uh, verse in 1 Corinthians here uh, kind of drives home the point of what Coffee with the Council is all about. Starting at verse 10. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptize anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel.
the Holy Gospel for this Sunday, the third Sunday after Epiphany, comes to us from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter, beginning with the twelfth verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. O land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who have sat in the region and shadow of death, light is drawn. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets, and they followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, and the boat with their father Zebedee, mending nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father, and they followed him. And Jesus went through the Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I would invite the children forward for a children's message this morning. Well, good morning. <laughs> Are you guys all sleeping? Well, good. Let's try it again. Good morning. Good morning. All right. That's a little better. A little bit better. Um, you know, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to bring my fishing rod with. Because I figured that right down through that middle channel, there's got to be some good northerns and walleye spots. Don't you think? So I was going to bring my fishing rod, and I was going to put a bobber on it. And then I was going to flip it out there as far as I could. I tried that once, folks. And uh, it was kind of interesting because I flipped it out, and it is flying towards the back. And it's flying right at the heads of these two elderly people who are sitting in the back pew. And my next thought is, how do I explain to the senior pastor that I just struck two people in the head with a bobber? Um, fortunately, I grew up by a river, and I've fished in a river all my life. And you learn really quick that if you're tossing something and there's a tree in the way, that you could just kind of flip it like that. And I had tossed that thing out. I did a flip like this. I went right over the head of the two people and it landed right smack dab in the middle of the of the aisle they applauded <laughs> but i decided i'm not going to do that you know that's kind of a strange thing did you hear jesus's words follow me and i'll make you fish for people now what kind of bait do you think we could use to fish for people fishing what fishing a fishing pole yes but if we had to put some kind of bait on it what do you think the bait would be Meat, a worm, of course. People love worms. And so that might be a decent, a piece of a worm, okay. Or maybe a, a, a gummy worm. They could eat that. A donut. Oh, oh, I had a comment I could make on that, but I'm not even going to. A hot dog, yes. Do you know I have underneath that cloth the most incredible lure 
for catching people. Do you want to know what it is? I'm not going to tell you. Why? Well, maybe I'm going to wait because I'm going to use that as part of my sermon. How's that? Or would you like to know it now? All right, I figured so. Here is the greatest lure for catching people. Doritos. I mean, who, who doesn't like Doritos, right? You don't like Doritos? Oh, my goodness. So if, so if I gave you this bag of Doritos, you would say, no, I don't like Doritos. Oh, you wouldn't say that, would you? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? You're going to have to... You're going to have to listen to my message because I'm going to tell you how good Doritos are at catching people, okay? All right. But before we do that and before we hear that, why don't you guys fold your hands and we will uh, say the prayers like we do, okay? I'll say them and you repeat the words. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for tomorrow. And thank you for every day. Be with us today. Help us. Fish for people. Amen. All right, we've got Tootsie Roll Pops on that side and on this side, so help yourself. Oh, yes. Yeah, I know. Fold your hands in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We hear these words today, O oh Lord, about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who calls his disciples, asking them, imploring them to follow him. And he will make them, he will show them how to fish for people. Lord, help us each and every day in our lives to fish for people as well. All this we ask, all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends of Christ, grace to you in peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I was going to sit down, but then I'm going to be right smack dab in the middle of this. And so I decided that uh, I will walk out here. Is that going to be all right, Matt? All right, thank you. <laughs> or if you only get my head, that's fine. Just get the right size. <laughs> I think I've shared with you before that, uh, that every now and then um, you've got to simply trust in God. Um, for messages. You, re you really do. And, and as I've shared, I said in all the work that I did in my doctorate stuff and things like that, the greatest piece of advice I ever got was from a professor who said that, remember, your sermon every week is all around you. All you have to do is open your eyes. That happened this week because I had another message that I was ready to do. Uh, but an incident took place um, at of all places, a a service garage um, and it was uh, it was later in the week and I was there getting a little work done on my vehicle and and this particular service place uh, has a big glass window so if you want to look into the service shop you can actually watch and see what the people are doing as they're working on your vehicle and stuff like that well there were three or four other people around that were getting oil changes and and things like that um, but there was this uh, this one lady with with two children um, one, one was from, I learned almost two years old. Um, for all of you who have two years, two year olds, um, you will, you will know this part about a two year old 
as well. Um, they are Houdinis, and they are escape artists, okay? And this little guy was getting away all the time. He would go chasing down, and of course, in a big service station and a new car dealership and all that stuff, there were some places where he probably should have been going. But he'd go in there, but it was his big sister who would always go charging after him and grab him just before he went behind some counter or something like that. And so I was kind of having a lot of fun watching that. And, and as I'm watching it, I watched another episode. It was his mother who actually turned out to be his aunt. But his aunt um, was, you know, keeping up with him, trying to make sure that she knew where both of them were. And the, little, the older one um, went up to a, uh, a candy machine and is looking and was pointing up to uh, a particular bag of potato chips. And so she's pointing up there, and so the aunt says, okay, and the aunt, uh, who did not speak a lot of English, um, is getting the dollar out and putting it in, and then as she's doing that, of course, the four-year-old is hitting all these buttons, as was the two-year-old, which is not a thing that you're supposed to be doing. And so the next thing you know, that she puts in a dollar, a quarter comes out, and she doesn't get anything. And of course, this little four-year-old was a little upset and kind of sad, you know, wondering, okay, come on, where's the chips? And they didn't come, and they didn't come, and they didn't come. And then the mom turned to me, and she said, would you help? And, and I got up, and I'm going, I don't know what's going on either. And I said, you know what you should do? I said, you know, you, you're out 75 cents, so, you know, why don't you go and tell somebody about it? Well, no, she didn't want to do that. And, and so they went about their way and their things, and they were doing all this other stuff. And, and then about 10 or 15 minutes later, I got up, and I'm looking at the thing, and what I read was this. Um, there were no signs about how much any of the things were. And what you needed to do, you needed to hit the number first to see how much something cost, and then you had to put in the money. And it came to find out that the bag of Doritos was a dollar. And so she actually needed to grab that other quarter and put it in, and things would have been fine. And, and so I'm thinking, how do I explain this to her? And I thought, ah, what the heck? So I pulled out a buck, and I, I, I got the chips. And, and as soon as I got the chips, um, they were kind of down the hallway. And so I walked down, and, and I went like this to the little girl, and I said, here they are. And, and the aunt looked at me, and, and she said, you paid for those? And I said, yeah, yeah don't worry about it. And, and so, so the girl got them. And, and I tell you what, talk about somebody who someday is going to be a little heartbreaker. Uh, this little four-year-old was, was just gorgeous. Jet black hair, uh, braided so amazingly it wasn't even funny. Um, dark brown eyes and just this smile that was contagious. And she grabbed those chips, and she looked at me, and she said, thank you. And I said, well, you're welcome. And, and so they, they, they went a little while, and, and I thought, okay, this is maybe, maybe my good deed for today. And so, so I'm sitting there, and I'm watching them work on my vehicle, and all of a sudden, um, she comes up with, uh, with the two little ones. And, and like I said, I, I made the mistake. I thought she was the mom. And she goes, no, I'm, I'm aunt, aunt. And I said, okay, that's good. And, and then I looked down, and this little gal hadn't opened the chips yet. And I'm going, oh, no, I got the wrong stuff. And I thought, oh, shoot. And, and, and the, the aunt looked, and she goes, no, 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 no. She said, you do not understand. She said, the village that we come from in Africa is such that if a total stranger gives someone a gift, and ask for nothing in return. That, she said, is how you say, a big deal. And I said, you're kidding. And she goes, she's waiting until she gets home so she can show her mom and all of the other family members what this person gave to her. And I'm thinking, is is that all it takes? 
Jesus tells us today that he's going to teach us how to fish for people. And when we hear that, we're going, okay, you got to have some incredible bait if you're going to fish for people, right? you got to really have something that's going to do it. Jeez, folks. It took a bag of Doritos corn chips to do it. As they were getting ready to walk away, the aunt looked at me and she goes, she would like to hug you. And I said, oh, I never turned that down. And so she gave me this big hug. And then she said, bless you. And guess what? As we think of those words from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, do you know that he never, ever, ever said anything about the color of a person's skin? Or where they were from, or what language they spoke, or any of those things. He simply said, follow me and I will make you fish for people. I thank God later that day for showing me what that scripture meant. Because I'll never forget that hug. Amen. baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. And congregation, if you'd like, on page 227 in the front of your red hymnals, um, you'll be able to, uh, to come along with us. Mom and Dad, I ask you now, who presents this child for holy baptism? Please respond. We present Logan Linnell for holy baptism.
called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have this child baptized into Christ? If so, answer, we do. As you bring this child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scripture, to mature her in faith and prayer, so that this child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God has made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help this child grow into the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, we do. We do. Sponsors. I ask you, do you promise to nurture this child in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, answer, we do. People of God, do you promise to support Logan Linnell and pray for her and her new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. Congregation, if you would please rise. I ask you now to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? Please join with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that this one who was washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life to you, the giver of honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay, if you want to bring your head down as close as you can. There you go, sweetheart. Logan Linnell, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. And she's looking at me like, is it bath time already? <laughs> oh, there you go, sweetie. Oh, good job. Blessed be the God, the source of all life, the word of salvation, and the spirit of mercy. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons a new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain in Logan Linnell the gift of your Holy Spirit, the gift of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of power and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. 
the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Logan Linnell, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Oh, you little smiley. You're going to break hearts someday too. Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and whoever follows me will have the light of life. And here you go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to light this candle, okay? Or maybe I'm not going to light this candle. Ooh. And you want to hold on to it for me? Can you do that? All right. Good job. Congregation, please join with me on page 231 at the bottom. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ, into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and hearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Ooh, my turn now. Come here, sweetheart. Oh, there you go, yeah. And may I be the first to present to you the newest member of God's church, Logan Linnell. Look at all them. Look at all them. Yeah. Oh, and now we're applauding you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What do you think, huh? Look at these. Look at these two. Oh, my goodness. Playtime now. The congregation, please rise. As together we say our Apostles' Creed, please join with us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and was buried. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he would come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. It's kind of like deja vu all over again, right there? <laughs> Please bow your heads for prayers of intercession. Gracious God, we give you thanks on this day that you have blessed us. Lord, we give you thanks for the opportunity to again witness one of the marvels of our church as one is baptized into our faith. Lord, we ask that you be with Logan Linnell. We ask that you be with her parents. We ask that you be with their sponsors as they watch over her. And we ask that you be with our entire congregation as we watch over her. All this we pray, merciful God. Receive our prayer. We pray, especially today, for Brett Swenson. We pray for Betty Heyman, for, Kellen, for 
Karen Miller, for Josie Oy. We pray indeed for the two-year-olds receiving their milestones. We pray for Logan Linnell. We pray for the family of Judy Cass. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, told us to go and fish for people. Help us, O oh Lord, in everything we do to show the world who we are so that all will know that we are Christians by our love. O oh, merciful God, receive our prayer. And now, gracious God, in the silence of our hearts, we offer up prayers and petitions heard only by you. Lord, we also give thanks for our radio broadcast this day in memory of Chuck Ebert from Terry. Be with her, be with all who have lost loved ones. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. And now into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I am screwing up the order of worship so bad today, it isn't even funny. However, we are going to do our offering. <laughs> Please be seated for our offering. You guys will get to sing. <laughs>
Please rise. Pray our offering prayer. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Our sending song, we are marching in the light. for Lutherans. <laughs> <laughs> Receive the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Worship is ended. Go in peace. Yes, peace.